first day of winter and um, we're first of December today so we're in the month um, the month my birthday is and the month Christmas is so apart from you know getting lots of gifts sadly it's the coldest bleakest time of the year and it's really icy on the roads right now I don't like that. And Christmas is coming up and I'm not prepared at all and I think sometimes as pagans it's hard to know where we stand with Christmas because it's kind of a Christianized, commercialized, uh, modernized tradition. <laughs> Santa Coke and you know the little Coca-Cola truck and all of that. Um, so yeah it can be a bit tacky can Christmas so I don't really know how I feel about it this year. I have decided this year that I am doing a kind of personal Christmas and um, you know you're supposed to spend Christmas with your family or with people feasting, celebrating, drinking lots um, personally I kind of like sitting around watching TV and eating chocolates but you know each to their own um, and I decided that you don't really Feel, have to feel obliged to do what everybody else does. I think I'm going to do it quietly and I think I'm going to spend time with my cats. I think I just fancy doing something very simple this year. I do want to get away from the the hype and the perfection of it all and the obligations. I want to just pull down the drawbridge and um, celebrate very quietly this year. Try and bring something very personal to something that has become a pagan, Christian, commercial, um, capitalist venture sometimes. Um, and just, you know, find some peace on the day because that's what it's about, peace and love, isn't it really? And rebirth, uh, um, the nurturing of all things new and um, vulnerable you know so I'm gonna consider myself new and vulnerable whoopee cats and wait till they see the Christmas tree I think I'm gonna put it up early this year so let's see if it holds out from the month of December anyway yeah so it's December and it is I am going to celebrate the whole month but I'm gonna do it in a very simple and quiet fashion
so now it's just going dark and I've got the fire lit and I'm enjoying just one moment of quiet and peacefulness that's what winter's about to me it's about hibernation, it's about finding your centre so and the little sparkly lights are beginning to light up like the stars out there, I love it apparently there were northern lights but I didn't see them and the boys in my pity choir were singing Galway Bay and the bells were ringing out on Christmas Day So it's been so cold that I've abandoned upstairs and I'm afraid I'm cozying downstairs on these cushions in front of the fire which I really like. I get a better sleep and I wake up earlier and um, whereas if I'm upstairs I tend to sort of go into a deep hibernation and I won't get out of bed till about 11 o'clock and I'll go what it's 9am and it won't be. Yeah I think it's in winter that you really um you're really faced with survival especially in a cold climate when it dips below freezing it really does actually bring you face to face with you know the basic essential survival in life and important things like keeping warm keeping well fed um, making sure you've got supplies in making sure even that you can maybe be snowed out for a while. So I want to take Christmas and Yule and midwinter right back to its simplest, most basic, um, what it means to me form. That makes me think about why, why we celebrate. It makes me think about how we celebrate, what's essential, what's important and what really feeds our souls in this uh, Rite of passage, which is what it is, really. So one of the things that I think is important to a lot of people, and we don't really realise it, it, it's cleaning our houses for Christmas, it's tying up the loose ends. It's like dealing with the paperwork for the old year, putting it away and just tidying up the clutter and even dusting out the corners to uh, bring in a Christmas tree, to be honest, and to bring in baubles and lights and to make the place festive and sacred. So cleaning seems to be an important part of Christmas and that ties in with the goddess Pershta or Pershta who was an Austrian Germanic goddess, possibly related to Frau Holle and associated with the 12 days of Christmas. And she would go from house to house and check upon the servants and see who had been a good servant for the year and who had kept the house clean. And if you had been a bad servant, she would slit you down the middle and stuff your innards with straw and rocks. And so this is all very symbolic of um, how we progress into the new year. Do we drag the baggage of the last year with us? Or do we clear it out to make space for the new? And Pöhde is a beautiful enchanting being at Christmas. And she's really appealing to people at this time. She had two faces. She was a beautiful young maiden and an ugly old woman and she was known as Schönepüchte or I think I'm saying this right, Schlafepüchte and uh, Schönepüchte is beautiful and Schlafepüchte is an ugly and almost wicked old crone um, but she's a lovable character
and every year in Austria they have a fight between these two sides of the um, Perchta called the, um, it was something like Glockenlaufen, which was a race between the ugly side of Perchta and the beautiful side of Perchta. And the winner of the race would dictate the weather. So it's a, a reenactment of primal forces of chaos and light and darkness which is kind of quite fun at this time of year and can represent so many things to us. She's a lovely little character, the little witch. So when I, I kind of think things come into consciousness and um, she was associated possibly in a Christian way with the 12 days of Christmas. I think Graham thought she was older and she would come to your house and check that you had left it clean and that especially if you were a woman that you had finished all your spinning for the year before the 12th night of Christmas, before the beginning of the new year in January. And she would punish those who had not finished their tasks. The idea behind this, um, the reason being that they should be ready to start their weaving in January at the beginning of the new year and so there's an idea of tying up loose ends, finishing your tasks and being prepared to push all that new energy into a new direction without hanging on to the old tasks of the previous year. So there's something really nice in actually obeying this goddess and listening to her wishes um, in that you clear out the old year and then we have 12 days out of time and then we can begin again and I think that's what I miss about Christmas it's a deep rest and um, yeah in the middle of winter you need a deep rest like that so um, first you do have to get your act together though somewhere on TikTok and I thought what brilliant idea to make some little gifts for people just something simple like a nice tree decoration so I thought it would be nice to make some flygaric mushrooms to hang on the tree or you can just leave them around the house that's decoration, I suppose. Um, but when you think about it, there's all sorts of lovely shapes you can hang from a tree. So I've got a couple of hearts here, I've got a star. Um, but uh, yeah, I really thought it would be nice this year to put a little bit of uh, effort into making simple gifts, nothing too expensive. I did have to buy the stuffing. Um, which is wasn't too bad, and um, I thought they make cool little gifts. Just to add something personal back to Christmas, um, I like to try and make something. This year I haven't got much to show, so what a good plan. So fly garricks are associated with Christmas quite strongly. In fact, a lot of people consider Santa Claus to be a fly garrick shaman. Um, the reason for this is um, because of the fact that he wears red and white, which might be a late tradition to him, but does uh, associate him with the sacred colours of red and white. Um, he flies through the sky and he delivers gifts down chimneys. So this might all indicate that there was a role for a shaman at Yuletide, at Winter Solstice, to go and visit the people 
and apparently take them the sacred mushrooms which if you think about it it was the darkest coldest part of the year there was no work to be done there was not enough light for things like that anyway and it's um, it was a time of turning dead so the theory goes that it was sacredly associated with visions and with soma and even soma is associated with Christ. So in some of the very early artwork, the Tree of Life is actually shown as a fly garret mushroom. Now the hanging the fly garret mushroom on the tree would be something to do with perhaps drying them and decorating them, um, hanging them up in the stockings above the fire as well. So I thought these were really cute little mushroom gifts that were easy to make and that I would use to decorate my tree. What's really weird about this time of year is that people are like, especially the strict pagans, are like, so how can you do this? Can you put up the Christmas tree and the Christmas lights and play the Christmas tunes? It's all so Christian. Um, I've got to admit, it is one of the most confused times of year. 
I think with every other festival we know we know what we're trying to achieve here but when it comes to Christmas there are so many mixed traditions and people get really irate about it and like you shouldn't celebrate on this date and if you're a pagan or you're heathen you're doing it wrong so you can't do any of the Christian traditions do you celebrate on the winter solstice like the Wiccans do? Do you celebrate sometime towards actually Imolc like the heathens do? You know, the first full moon after the new moon can, can almost be at the end of January by then. And we're moving on in a different kind of season and tide, if you ask me. And my answer is, so yeah, people get really irate about this and like question when to celebrate and how we celebrate and whether we should, you know, do some traditions because of Christian or whether we can find our own traditions and actively, you know, create new because it's all recreated, all new traditions. And I don't think we have an answer, to be honest. I don't think we can really separate it now. It's gone quite a long way down the line. It's what it is in, in many ways. Um, so it's very hard to get away from it whether you want to or not. And I don't think that you have to be really strict about it and really self-sacrificing and um, very sort of uh, dictatorial about it. Um, to me, all I can say is what am I celebrating? What, what is this about to me? Well, to me, it's about the return of the longer, warmer days. And where I am in Britain, that is going to become apparent very soon, um, next few weeks. And it may be that the psyche and the land interact in different ways for different cultures and different people. Um, but I actually think that the land comes first. So if you're feeling warmer, sunnier days sort of on the 2nd of January, don't necessarily wait until February almost to celebrate Yule. This is what I think. I think it's kind of a seasonal thing. So if, yeah, if you're far north in, say, Norway or Sweden, then maybe you do want to celebrate much later on when you begin to feel the tides turning. Um, maybe that's the returning light that they're celebrating. It's something that we don't really connect to. So I personally think celebrate when you feel it's right. If you want to celebrate the longest nights, um, celebrate then. If you want to celebrate a few days later when the sun's gaining strength, then celebrate on the 25th. If you want to you know, really mark the end of a dark, dark period and coming into a, a much stronger spring already, then perhaps you want to celebrate, you know, a whole moon from now. But I think that you can do it all. Um, you don't have to be dogmatic about it. And really, it's listening to the land that's when you should celebrate, when the tides and the seasons dictate when things are returning. I was looking for some of these and I looked online they were quite expensive and coincidentally I walked around the corner to Dobby's and they were selling these for £6. So my, I'm really happy to have been able to pick up a little Yule goat. So um, he's a lovely little symbol is the Yule goat. He's a symbol of fertility and he's kind of the sacrificial animal of the season, there's a lot of animals associated with midwinter and, and with Yule, like things like the goose, the reindeer, the pig, the boar, uh, the stag. Um, if you think about it, the list goes on. And this one is um, the goat associated supposedly with Thor, although some people would quibble this as association with Thor, but there you go. Um, and it's a really nice little addition into the room with some fertility symbolism and there goes the bauble with some fertility symbolism so it's a really nice addition to the room and it's got fertility symbolism and the thing uh, traditionally it was cut from the last sheaf of corn that was cut and they were made into these christmas goats um, and it's a symbol of life continuing, even through winter, life being safeguarded and 
um, honouring, of course, the last spirit of the harvest. So you protect the spirit of the harvest and he brings you luck and he can bring you gifts. So um, mixing traditions, mixing symbols a little bit, I would definitely get one of these and put it in your house because they really do have nice energy and look at that tail. Oh, they're so cute.
not ready for the day at all today. So sorry about my dirty fingernails in that last video. I was gonna film this all again, but actually I quite liked what I got. So I'm gonna show you something I practiced a bit last night. Um, the knot is a little difficult, so I would practice on a spare piece of cloth before you begin your finished pieces. The thing is, you can pull a knot and pull it tight. I made the mistake of going around and squishing the foam into place and shaping the mushroom. Don't do it because the string will come loose and you'll get little curled, you know, little piles of thread coming off here. So once you've pulled your string taut and taken the needle to another part of the mushroom, leave it taut and turn the mushroom and carry on and it will take its own shape. And that way you get a much neater knot at the end. So it took a little practice, I think I understood. Don't mess with the mushroom. Anyway, they're lovely, I really like them and I've decorated my tree with, I want to make loads because they look fantastic. And it's got a theme now of red and white with the mushrooms. It really does look quite sacred, sacred tree. Um, so I'm going to show you that in a minute, but thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this little vlog. Um, I'm hoping to get back to a more normal routine next year, so we'll see how that goes. And um, thank you again. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Yule, Merry Midwinter and Happy Wassailing. And whatever you do at this time of year, I wish you a very deep and peaceful rest and lots of celebration nice food so i'm going to show you my tree i love it and have a good one see you soon thank you bye